Das ist Muria. Das ist Muria. Ich bin Hamid. I am Hamid. I met 14-year-old Hamid a week after his home burned down. He'd been living here in a makeshift tent in the largest refugee camp in Europe, along with nearly 13,000 other people. For years, human rights groups have called it the worst refugee camp on earth. The entire place burned to the ground on the 9th of September. Here fire, fire here fire. All the Moria zone fire everywhere. So I'm very sad because this was our tent. Hamid fled his home in Afghanistan two years ago with his parents. His mom, a teacher, felt the family's life was in danger. They arrived at the camp a year ago. The authorities stopped their journey to follow their dream of a better life in Europe. Now they've told them to move to a new camp built after the fire. What is your dream for the future? I will be building engineer in future. Where do you want to go now? Germany. I want to go to Germany. Never give up. <laughs> Just a short walk away, Hamid's school. So this is the school? Yes, this is painting class. What did you learn here? Here, German. German? Yes. A mile away from the camp, Muhammad and Hamza are playing at building a new home. What are you doing with this? This is a house. Look at the house. Hello? Is it a house or not? No, it's not a house. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. Hamza is from Syria. He came to Greece with his mom, dad, and brother, hoping to join his four older siblings in Ireland. They've been waiting to leave the camp for 11 months. They've now put up a temporary tent in a car park. <laughs> Hamza's mom has also the nightmare of illness to deal with. She has not been able to see the specialist doctors she needs. This is the tumor. Yeah. We are now sitting in a place where the police is not allowing us to go farther uh, or inside. This is what it's called the new camp. Uh, this is on my right. And uh, a few hundred of people uh, came into this camp uh, voluntarily. But so many others, they refused and rejected this idea that to move to a new camp. The Greek authorities announced that the new camp is temporary. But most of the refugees I met were not convinced by promises to help with asylum and to significantly improve the conditions for refugees.
Come on, please, the families go to the camp. No, 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 دیگه اینجا ما نمیخوایم دزی کم بوده. با خاطر که یک سال دموریا تیر کردیم در جنگل بدون بار، بدون او، بدون حمام و دیگه چیز. حالا دیگه نمیخوایم کنیم چون بر میاد سال دیگه اینجا تیر کرد. در مشکل دموریا در جنگل بوده. امروز حیوانا. حالا بیایم اینجا بندیش، بیایم اینجا بیشتر میاد سال دیگه اینجا تیر کرد. Medical charities are dealing with the fallout from the fire and to the added layer of COVID-19. It's a big medical emergency and putting on top the risk of COVID, of course, uh, this, this put another level of, uh, of need to respond. There is no clear strategy from the Greek government to respond to this crisis and also to, to COVID-19. There was no clear strategy even when Moria was still existing. Uh, now people are sleeping out. On top of each other, the risk of, uh, of spreading the disease is much, much higher. 400 unaccompanied children were living in the camp before the fire were flown to the mainland. Ten European countries have agreed to take care of them. In itself, the movement of the unaccompanied minors to the mainland, on the one hand, it's a good thing. On the other hand, it's one of the things that makes me the most furious because we have been calling this for this for months, for years, we were always told it's not possible and it needed this disaster for it to be possible. The shiny white tents of the new camp have been filled in the last few days by many who are reluctant to occupy them. But they are people with no other choice. They don't want more of the same inhumane and unsanitary conditions. These people are living in a kind of purgatory Promises to change Europe's broken asylum and migration system will only be felt by those caught in it when real action is taken.